Good morning, good morning as usual. Um, so, for those of you who might be new and don't know me, I'm Sveta from Home Staging Step by Step. I'm a professional home stager <clears throat> for the last almost 16 years and I'm located in Montreal, Canada. And uh, I run most of my business online now and I help have a savvy home sellers or home stairs <clears throat> to present their house in the best possible way. So either you can really enjoy it or you can get the most money uh, from it. And for home sellers, um, it's an interesting thing because today is the market is still a little crazy, right? Which is really good for sellers. But at the same time, if you do put a little bit of effort in and you present your house in the best possible way and you also update it, which is a very important part, and I keep drilling it into people's head, that um, it's not staging, it's not just about making it look pretty from the superficial point of view, but you should ideally do a little bit of uh, work to get it really updated so that will get you a lot more money and uh, good morning debbie as usual you are, are very punctual uh so if you're just getting on uh, please say hello to me uh, please um identify yourself you can choose at the top of the video you can click the permission for Streamyard to use your facebook profile and then i'll know who you are and if not you just have to give me your name and if you guys are watching on replay then hashtag replay if you're watching live then hashtag alive and um, today I'm actually quite excited about the uh, the content because I thought it would be fun to do something different and usually even me I am I tend to focus let's say if I do stagings um, we always start with the big things first, right? So I tend to uh, focus on um, like bigger pieces of furniture, updating the house, painting, window coverings, light fixtures, whatever it might be that creates the first general impression um, of the house. And especially in staging, and I'll show you some examples. I actually worked really hard for this presentation. And I'm still waiting for some people to, to come on. Hopefully, we'll have some uh, more people joining us live today or watching the replay afterwards. But I realized that a lot of times I let, I let the smaller details slip. And especially in staging, there is a reason for that. It's because sometimes I run out of money the customer budget or i don't have enough accessories and you know in staging it's not necessarily always perfect and that's what makes it different from interior design or decorating and when i used to teach uh, people who wanted to be home stagers that was like my biggest challenge people who came in and were let's say interior designers they had the hardest time because they want everything like super well matched and they want everything that, you know, like they have the rules that they want to respect. And in their mind, everything has to be just perfect. And it's not. And even if it's not perfect, in my opinion, and, you know, my experience of the last uh, 15 years has shown me that it doesn't have to be perfect. But there are certain basic rules, obviously, that do have to be respected. And so I've done quite a bit of research myself over the last few days. Uh, for today's presentation and I've also uh, did some playing around and uh, I've practiced on uh, on my own house and I want to I'm going to show it to you I'm going to share it with you because at the end at the end of today I want you to walk away with <clears throat> an understanding and some knowledge on what you can do in a simple way me it's always about simple right so what you can do in a simple way to uh, know how to style and decorate, whether it's a sideboard in your dining area or whether it's a console at the entrance, but you know a flat surface, or it could be even uh, maybe be a dresser in your bedroom. But what are the kind of things that you can do which would make it look functional? So I'm all about function, of course, because you'll live in the house. So you still need to make sure that it's uh, it's functional for your needs. 
and how you can make it look pretty and at the same time not overspend. So those are my three criteria in whatever I do for my clients. And uh, actually today I have a staging, a new staging client to go see. And I'm also starting a new um, decorating project for uh, for uh, for a young man who is moving into a condo. So that's going to be quite exciting. But my my three my three criteria usually is function, uh, form, meaning that it has to look beautiful, and um, a budget. You know, so not to overspend. Okay. So I've tried to create, uh, I have some notes here because I wanted to make sure that I give you very specific, actionable, and uh, easy to remember things. You're welcome to take notes or you can re-listen to this video afterwards about the things that you really need to know to make your console or your sideboard look um, in the, mo the most attractive. The first thing you need to do is to measure your console, obviously, but it, you know, it might be obvious, but it might not be because some people don't do it. Why you want to measure it and you measure its width, obviously, is because when you're choosing the biggest uh, art or a mirror or something that's going to go above the console table, you need to know the measurement of your console so you can do the right proportions, right? In, in design, we call it scale also. And I see there's a couple of people that are joining us, so, so that's great. So please say hello to me and uh, give me hashtag live if you're live and tell me who you are, where you're from. So as I'm talking, I can also see the uh the chat my little chat box here so i was talking about the starting with the measuring of your console table or your sideboard and then you have to decide what we can call a hero piece or your main your focal point so the main thing that's going to um be above that console now usually uh, people go with either a big mirror which is amazing it looks great or an artwork so it's either one single artwork or it could be um two probably two would be the maximum i would maybe not go with the three because then it becomes more complicated in arranging it and there are very specific rules so of course it depends on the size of your overall uh, room it depends on the height of your ceiling as well but if you look at the kind of um the standard the standard thing so i can give you a couple of pointers on what size that piece that central piece should be so um either artwork or mirror i would say if you choose artwork then it should in general it should be approximately two thirds of your console width. That's how wide your artwork should be. And in terms of the height, again, it depends on how tall your ceilings are. But if it's a regular house, uh, chances are it's eight, eight and a half feet. So the, the height should be 30 to 36 inches, unless it's a mirror, then it can be more. And then how to, how high do you put it above, you know, your console? Well, the general consensus is the rule is that it's about eight to 10 inches above the console table. That's how you're supposed to, to be hanging it. Now that's kind of difficult for a lot of people because proportion and scale is um isn't a, it, it's it's not necessarily easy some people can see it like me i i don't i think i have it kind of an innate ability when i look at something i just feel it i just know if it's too big or too small or the right proportion but to make it simple because that's what i'm trying to do for all of you is uh remember that rule so if it's an artwork it's about two-thirds of the width of the console table 30 to 36 inches high and then about eight to 10 inches above the console table now if you're putting a mirror then again it could be about one half to three quarters to 75 percent of the width of your console table so that makes sense again in terms of the height it could be 30 to 40 inches high for a regular for a regular size house but then if you have very tall ceilings of course you can go much higher and then 
you know, if you have a, it, it's just, just make sure that your, whatever you put above the console does not go over larger than the console. And I'm not going to actually show you an example of what I had to do. And it's not amazing. <laughs> and uh, I want to show it to you because I didn't have a choice. I ended up doing it. It was a staging of a vacant home and that's the best I could do in the circumstances. But when you look at it, you're going to see that it's something clashes that it's, it's not the greatest. And then in terms of the mirror, you know, as we we're saying, so 30 to 40, 40 inches high, and it should be about six to eight inches above the console. So that's the first thing that you're going to choose. So the first step is to measure console. The second step is to decide what you're going to be putting as your main focal point above the console. And then find the appropriate piece and then everything is going to flow from there right so um then the question is a lot of times people ask me okay well uh, where do i position it do i position it right in the center or do i position it off center and then again it's a question of choice there's no wrong or right way to do it a lot of people naturally tend to put it in the middle in the center just because it's easier i think it's uh, we're more used to symmetry in our life so it's kind of the first thing that comes up and when we look at it it's to put it in the center which is fine now just remember that when you put it in the center it creates more of a a little bit more of a traditional look i would say but you could also off center it which would look great and more contemporary but it's a little bit more difficult uh in terms of organizing it because it really has to balance with the other pieces that we're going to talk about which are on your console so um and again you know it depends if you prefer a symmetrical balance look where you know the two sides are very similar or if you prefer an asymmetrical balance look which is what i prefer it's more um it's more uh, contemporary but it's also a little bit more difficult to achieve okay so that is and then uh, the next step so we have two steps we just have to decide on the position of that main piece and now we have to think my next suggestion is for you to think about functionality because you know whether you're selling the house or you're not selling the house but you're still living there you know it has to be it has to be functional because there's no point it's very difficult to live in a house which looks amazing but it looks like a museum and you cannot really you know live the way it's convenient for you i i personally don't really believe in that and i don't think most people uh, most the regular people can actually live like that for a very long time so if you're thinking about functionality of that particular console or sideboard then you have to think to yourself what is it that um is important to me like that it's sitting there so for example if it's a it's, it's a console table at the entrance well do, is it a little dark sometimes you know the entrance the hallway is a little dark so maybe the first thing you want to do is to put a lamp there which is which actually adds a lot to console or sideboard and i really like using lamps it's also can be a statement piece and it's going to balance out your artwork or your mirror so you know think a lamp a table lamp is as one of the maybe main features of that console table and then you could also think okay well when i walk in i need a place to drop my keys so for example you might want to have some kind of a bowl or a vase or a container there maybe a bowl um that you know is fun your functionality so you're putting your keys in it and if that's the case you're starting to assemble the different shapes the different heights the different textures and styling is all about that. And that brings me to my next point, which is, uh, you know, once you decided on your main piece and then you thought about your functionality and that could become your second anchor. So for example, if it's a lamp, and then uh, what do you do next? Then you have to put a few decorative items. Now, I'm gonna show you some pictures. I personally, and I'll comment, I don't think you need a lot of items. I think less is more and it doesn't have to be cluttered, okay? I personally do not like cluttered spaces, but again, if it's for sale, then I would definitely keep it to the minimum. 
if it's for you personally and you're just gonna you know live there and enjoy it then it's up to you you could put more things there uh, if you wish but in general again i'm trying to give you some general rules on the styling so you can play around that's what i did yesterday and you can adjust it and change things but they're basic rules to what you should follow if you want to have a successful styling so the first thing is uh you need something high you need something medium high and you need something low and that's rule number one and remember that you have to vary the shapes the sizes the colors the textures but it still has to go together and that's where it's a little uh, complicated, right? So when you're doing something high, again, think about a high object that you can put there. What can you put? For example, a lamp would qualify. Maybe a vase, either with flowers or not, that would qualify. Maybe some branches in a, in a, some, in a vase. Maybe a plant. And when you work with your, your tall object, don't be scared of positioning it a little bit with an overlap over your uh, painting or your mirror because it's okay it's going to look great like that then in terms of the medium height objects again you know what is your variety of, of objects that you can uh, you can use you can use some vases you can use some bowls you can use books okay st stacks of books you can use some candles uh so all of the things that uh, are or even smaller plants that that is going to be your medium uh, size objects and then you have to go low so what do you use for low objects again you can use some shells some rocks some decorative balls some small candles maybe some a small stack of books so th remember the concept of varying the heights so high medium low and varying the shapes the textures the sizes and i'll show you some examples in a couple of minutes so the other thing you need to remember is what i call the rule of uh, odd numbers and hello lindsay nice to see you so um the rule of odd numbers it's something that is very easy to remember and it's very easy to apply and it makes a huge huge difference so when you decorate and you create what we call groupings or vignettes is you always have to use three or five objects i mean it's rare that you would use more than five and probably even five is not that common but just remember to use an odd number of objects and don't place them in straight line okay there is nothing worse than like seeing something that's just like you know like all lined up and it just doesn't make it for a visual it's not visually appealing at all and if you try it then i'm sure your eye is going to tell you you're going to know that it doesn't look great so you always have to play with the positioning of those items usually we put like the taller one in the back the smaller ones in the front but you have to play around with it and see what what feels good and then another good trick I have for you, so you'll see in the examples I'm going to share with you, is sometimes if you really like an object and you really want to use it for your styling, but you can see that the proportions that it might not be the right height, it might be too low, well, there is an easy trick. You can put something underneath. So, for example, a couple of books. And uh, if you need, you can also wrap those books in brown paper. I've seen people do that and it looks great. And then you put that object on top and that really creates the height that you might be missing. So that's what I wanted to tell you. And let me see if there is something else that I'm forgetting. No, I think that's pretty much it. So now what I want to do is I want to share with you. I'm going to share the ones that I've, uh, I I've worked on. And uh, some of them are mine, some of them are not mine, but I will comment on them. And then I think you're going to get a good idea of uh, what you, uh, the different examples, okay? So uh, I hope you can, you can see this. And uh, now that I'm doing this, I cannot see, uh, <laughs> 
I cannot see you guys, but <laughs> let me know. Are you are you seeing? Oh, there. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Just like please comment and let me know if you're seeing my uh, uh, my little uh, presentation here. Okay. Just say yes, so I, I can be sure that you're seeing it because otherwise I'll be talking to myself. Anyway, so uh, the first one I want to show you. These are not mine. I took them from. Uh, I took them online. I wanted to show you the examples of these two. I, it's not personally, it's not really to my taste, but what I do want for you to see is that like this is obviously the first one is obviously the a small one. It's a small sideboard. And so you see the mirror, what they did, I'm not sure why they put this extra, <clears throat> an extra thing on top of the mirror, probably to create additional height because uh, to balance it with the picture that's above the fireplace, looks like a fireplace. And then again, you know, what I did want to show you is that they use the lamp as the main uh, object that's the tall one. And then they have uh, some vases and some books in front of it. Now, the one on the right, this is more of a symmetrical uh, balance. Again, you know, it's got a round mirror. The mirror kind of uh, reminds you of the round shape of that particular console table. And then they just put little objects of different heights with the plant being the, the tallest one and kind of overlapping the mirror a little bit. And then they added smaller, smaller things to the side and made it look uh, very balanced. Not 100% to my personal taste, but it works. So that's what I wanted to show you. Let me just go back and make sure that you guys are seeing this. Yes, you are. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so let me go back because I'm supposed to actually have technically two screens <laughs> to be able to do the sharing properly, but I don't. I'm doing it all with one computer. So, but it's okay. So I'm going back and now let me see. Okay, so I'll show you this one as well. So this one, again, this is not mine. Um, it comes from actually a, a store website, uh, King, one Kings Lane. It's a store in the States for those of you who are in the States. And, um, this is just to show you how they use, again, it's, you know, it's pretty much symmetrical balance on both uh, sides. You have those chairs, then they use one big piece of art, right? That's about two thirds of the width of the console table. And then they have, uh, a, a series of objects in my opinion it's way too much and i don't even think it really matches with the artwork give me your opinion tell me what you think but nevertheless um i wanted to show you the clever use obviously they didn't have something that was tall enough and so they used you know a couple of stacks of books here and some books here to cleverly lift it up uh, the the flowers and the other objects. Okay, so let me know what you're thinking about this one And then I wanted to show you the same store the same layout look they kept exactly the same at the bottom But they just replaced the top with two pieces of art instead of one now the two are Oh, the two, sorry, the two are very symmetrical. Um, they are a little tall in my opinion, but then again, I don't see the height of the ceiling. So maybe the ceiling is tall, then it works. Again, in my personal, for my personal taste, it's uh, a little bit too cluttered. There's a lot, too many things going on here. But, you know, the main point I wanted to make is just to show you that it's possible to use two pieces of art if you want instead of one, or, you know, you could even put two mirrors instead of one that could be an interesting thing to do also okay so if you have any comments while we're while we're talking you know i i keep switching back and forth between my screens so you can you can comment and i'll see it okay now let me show you the one that was not <laughs> was not a huge success in my opinion it, that is something i did and i had to do it during a staging it was a vacant home staging so when we arrived there, you know, we had a limited number of uh, things with us. So artworks and accessories and basically you make do with whatever you bring because we don't necessarily want or have the time to go out and start shopping in the middle of a staging, increasing the costs or um, basically I run out of, uh, of, of uh, accessories. So 
it's not by like when you look at it okay i'm sure you can see what's wrong with this picture <laughs> well first of all that artwork is too big for this console table right and uh the problem was that i didn't have anything else to use so i whatever artworks i had i kind of put them in the best possible places in the rest of the uh, in the rest of the condo and that was the best i could do with uh, this particular one it just fitted there there was nothing else i could use so again you know it's definitely not perfect i'm sure at this point you can tell that it's too big for this console table but i had to do it because otherwise i had nothing else to do and the other thing that's wrong with this example that i want to show you is that i and i knew that it's not something that i didn't know i just had to make do you know it still sold very quickly so but as you can tell this is wrong so i have a tray with candles the candles actually pick up on the colors from the artwork so that works really well but it's i don't have a tall object like i'm missing i'm missing a lamp or a plant or something or at least a stack of books to lift this up to make it look better it looks very puny and insignificant there and everything stems from the fact that this artwork is just too big for that um that console table okay so i wanted to show you that and then um i'll finish by showing you something that i did yesterday and i uh made different variations of uh different uh and it's my own house and uh, my quality of the photos are not the best sorry about that i'm not a professional photographer but i want to show you so here what is a little bit difficult in this particular case what makes it a lot more difficult is that i don't have a main hero piece i actually took an artwork that i brought from my uh from my inventory and I'm thinking of maybe it's a little bit too big for this wall. This wall is not very big, but I could cover it up and just put artwork there just to show for demonstration purposes, but I don't really want to make extra holes in my house, in the walls. But I have this alcove, okay, which is what my husband built for me when we renovated this house. And this is what I wanted because I wanted it to be a space for like uh, books and whatever, you know, candles. I love candles, my obsession with candles and whatever other objects I want to put in them. So what I did for the purposes of uh, this uh, of this exercise is I just brought all sorts of random accessories and decorative pieces and whatever I had in the house, whatever I have in my staging inventory. And then I started combining them in different ways to show you that it's possible to use the same object, but in different ways to create a different look. And you can also vary, right? If you have certain things that you like, you can vary them and, uh, you know, leave it like for a few months and then you change things around. So in the first one, the one to the left, uh, I took a lamp. So I used the lamp as my tall piece, as you can tell. And then um, this one, like I said, it's a complicated example because I have to double accessorize, right? Instead of having a big mirror or an artwork, which would make it much easier, I have to accessorize what's inside the alcove plus what's at the bottom and everything has to be balanced out. So as I was mentioning, I definitely prefer the asymmetrical look, which is what you've got here. So you have a tall lamp and then you have a medium sized object, a couple of smaller objects. But I want you to notice that it's balanced out by this big book that I have here of Joanna Gaines. The same thing, I actually pre probably prefer the arrangement to the right, on the right. And I balanced out, so here I took away the lamp and I put uh, a tall vase with flowers as my tall piece. And then I have my medium piece and I didn't put a small piece here because I already have a lot of things going on in the alcove. But in the alcove, I um, balanced my tall flowers with a tall handle uh, candle holder, right? So you can see this kind of a, a, a symmetry there, right? The balance. So let me just see if you are um, giving me any comments. I don't see any comments, so I'm going to continue. But like I said, if you have any comments, you know, please put them in the chat because I can see them. So those were like two different uh, arrangements that I made. 
and then um and then uh we'll do the next one so i did two more okay again with a random objects that i had in my house and in my staging inventory so the one on the left it, i change the lamp i put a different a different lamp there and you know i have the taller medium smaller objects on the left and then what i did is i used this beautiful little sculpture that i have uh and i used that as kind of my main focal point for that alcove okay so and it fits perfectly way well into that niche and then on this on this one on the one on the right i basically left everything the same at the bottom and i replaced the statue the sculpture and here i used this uh smaller artwork as inside the alcove as my focal point for it okay so that's another variation of the same type of objects but just to show you different looks that are, are possible to achieve with whatever with whatever you've got there and i have one more to show you which actually might be my personal favorite and what i'm going to do i'm going to tell you the uh my 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 action call to action right after i'm, I'm going to show you this one so this one it, it's a little bit more colorful and again you know i changed things around so if you remember i so i had this um this accessory which is like a golden branch so i use that as my tall object and then i have my medium sized object i use the stack of colorful travel books uh, which are usually sitting inside that alcove actually and uh, i use that as my vignette as my grouping and then here i balanced out the golden the gold uh, branch with a tall uh, candle holder and I added in it and this is also balanced out as you can see there is a line here with a vase a vase and kind of a vase of the same color so that is what I did so I'm going to stop sharing now and uh let me see i'm gonna go back to okay here i am um so that's i just wanted to show you that you can use different objects that you already have in your house or you can buy but you can just combine them in, in very different ways to create different looks i thought it was a lot of fun i hope you enjoyed it and what i'm gonna do is i'm going to um actually put those five different looks that i created in the facebook group and I'm going to ask people to choose their favorite and we'll see what's going to happen. So if you already have your favorite, I'd like to know what it is. And then I'd like to know why it is your favorite, like what you like about it or what you don't like about it. So I'm going to post that hopefully by the end of the day today. I have kind of a busy day, but I'll try to do it today. And um, one last thing I want to mention is, well, a couple more things actually is i have a couple of announcements so the other thing i want to remind you that you, if you're looking for some help for uh state uh, styling i am uh i'm available so i did have a, a mini session special which is now finished but debbie i am not forgetting um our session coming up and then but i still have one my regular one hour session so for 97 dollars. so if you want to do that no problem you know where to find me and a one more announcement is that i will be having a little black friday sale which will probably start towards in the next couple i don't know by friday this week and uh one of the things i'm going to do is for people who are selling their house i know they like my home staging for everyone course self self-study course and i'm going to put it on sale so uh, watch out for that we're gonna have a crazy good special on that so if you if you need it uh, it's gonna be coming up so that's it ladies for today thank you for watching if you're watching on the replay don't forget to hashtag replay and if you have any questions you know post your questions and I'll be happy to answer them um, and uh, <laughs> thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, I'll be posting those five uh, different uh, different uh, photos of the styling that I did, and then we'll see what people are gonna, which one they people are gonna like the best. And uh, I want you to let me know which one you like the best. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. Bye.